What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafter Workshop video. We're here at Fabtech 2017. I'm here with a bunch of other YouTube makers. We've got Jimmy Duressa right here, April Wilkerson, John Malecki, Doug from Retro Weld, uh, Zach Herberholz, a whole bunch of awesome makers, and we're all here building pieces of furniture. So Jimmy built this awesome table and we all built seating to go around it. So I built this walnut and maple and steel stool. So let's go ahead and get started with the build video. I started this project by building the stool seat, and I just used some scraps I had left over from the dining table build I did recently, and they worked perfectly for this build. I cut the strips to 14 inches long on the miter saw, and then glued the strips together to form the seat blank. I didn't quite have enough walnut strips to make up the seat, so I added a few hard maple scraps I had on hand, and I think it really gave the seat an awesome look. While the glue dried, I worked on a quick jig for the bandsaw to cut out the circular seat shape. This jig is based on a video by Ty Mosier, and I'll have a link to check out his video in the video description below. The jig is super simple to make. I used a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and started by marking the location of the blade as well as the miter slot on my bandsaw. Next I marked a line every inch starting from the blade. And finally I marked the center of the board and then moved over to the drill press. At the drill press, I drilled holes at each intersection, making sure the hole was big enough so the screw I was going to use to hold the seat to the jig would spin freely. To finish off the jig, I added a strip of hard maple, which I cut to fit the miter slot on my bandsaw, to the bottom of the jig with some CA glue and a few brad nails. Before cutting the seat into a circle, I flattened the glue up at the planer, and this is always such a satisfying step. It's amazing to see the rough blank turn into a beautiful chunk of wood at this point. Next, I marked the center on the bottom of the seat blank and drilled a hole. To attach the jig, I added a screw through the corresponding hole on the jig, and the measurements on the jig correspond to the radius of the circle, so I attached the screw through the 7 inch hole. At the bandsaw, I slid the jig into the blade using the miter slot to hold the jig in place, and then started spinning the seat blank. On the first pass, I removed the bulk of the material, and then I came back for a second pass after moving the screw over half an inch in the jig. The final diameter of my seat was 13 inches, so I actually needed to go back and add another hole between the six and seven inch holes, but I wanted to cut the seat to rough size on the first pass, and then do a second pass to cut it to final size. After cutting the seat to its final size, I sanded the edges smooth, and there were a few blade marks left from the bandsaw, so I started with 80 grit and then moved up to 120 grit. To give the seat a more comfortable feel, I added a 3 8 inch radius roundover to the top and bottom edges. I did this at the router table and created the roundover in two passes. There's a lot of ingrain to contend with on the edges of this piece, so I wanted to make sure I didn't get any tear out, hence why I took it in two passes. Next, using a scribing tool, I marked in about an inch around the top edge of the seat, and this is where the carved section ended, and this line just gave me a reference point during carving. I also marked the center of the seat here. To establish the depth of the carved part of the seat, I used a 2 inch Forstner bit and drilled down roughly half an inch. And this is a trick a lot of bowl turners use, and it works really well to give you a point of reference when carving like this. Next I installed the ArborTech turbo plane on my angle grinder, and the turbo plane is a wood shaping blade that can be attached to any 4 inch or 4.5 inch right angle grinder, and is perfect for carving seats. Before moving on to the seat blank, I tried out the turbo plane on a scrap 2x4 and was honestly amazed at the surface quality I got the first time I ever used the tool. Once I got a little more comfortable with the turbo plane, I moved on to the actual seat. And I just removed material slowly, trying to create a smooth transition from the hole in the center of the seat to the line I marked towards the edge of the seat. And I found that moving perpendicular to the grain left the best surface finish, and I ended up with basically zero tear out following this method. All in all, the carving only took about 20 minutes, and that was with me taking my time and going extra slowly. This thing will remove a ton of material if you really dig in. And one thing, I would definitely try and do this carving outside because it makes a huge mess, and there's really not a great way to collect the dust. After getting the shape roughed out, I moved inside and blended the carved areas with my random orbit sander. I started with 80 grit, and this process actually went way faster than I thought it would. I probably only spent about 20 minutes getting the seat sanded up to 180 grit. Before applying finish, I added my stamp and the date, and I'll have links to both these items in the video description below. 
For the finish, I applied a few coats of Minwax Wipe on Poly, and I just love the way the grain popped when I added that first coat of finish. The walnut is gorgeous, I love the color variation in this air dried walnut, and the maple even had a little bird's eye in it. And considering these were basically scraps, I think the seat turned out great. With the seat finished, I packed up and headed to the Fabtech trade show in Chicago. The awesome folks at Lincoln Electric invited a handful of YouTube makers out to the show, including Jimmy DiResta, April Wilkerson, Zach Herberholz from ZH Fabrications, Douglas from RetroWeld, John Malecki, and yours truly. The show was a ridiculously fun experience, and this group included some of my favorite people from this community. It was awesome to see what everyone came up with and watch them build in person. I want to say a huge thank you to Lincoln Electric for bringing us to the show, and here's to hoping they do it again next year. Anyway, let's get back to the build. Here's a look at what the stool base design looked like, and all of the pieces had angles cut on each end, and instead of going through all these angles here, I'll have this SketchUp file available for download for free on my website if you'd like to build one of these for yourself. The base was made from one inch by 12 gauge square tubing, and the first step was to cut the pieces to length. I used a porta band to do this, and this definitely wasn't the ideal tool for the job, but we were limited due to the trade show environment and the restrictions on the tools that created sparks. After getting my pieces cut out, I started getting everything welded up using the Lincoln Electric PowerMig 210MP, and I had it set up to run solid core MIG. I made sure to fill all the gaps in the joints so that they could be ground flush later, but this meant that I was left with some pretty ratty looking welds. They were definitely strong, but definitely not my prettiest welds. With the base welded up, I cut a mounting plate from a piece of scrap from the Torchmate plasma table, and then drilled a few holes using a step bit. I then welded this plate onto the legs, and then took the base over to the fared booth to have my welds ground down. Finally, I attached the seat to the base using a few screws, and the stool was done. I'm really happy with the final look of the stool, although I probably would have painted the base if I had built this at home. I think these stools would make for great seating in a small dining area, and they're so small that they tuck away really nicely, and they're actually really comfortable with the carved seat. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. This was a lot of fun. Thanks again to all the folks at Lincoln Electric for inviting us out. Uh, if you wanna see all the tools and materials I used, I'll have links in the video description below. And last, I wanna say a huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. All right, thanks again for watching everybody. And until next time, happy building.